Hello and welcome to Season 1, Episode 2 of Be a Brilliant Human. My name's Joel Young and I'm your host on this podcast and I'm well known as the creator and custodian of MPA, which is non-personal awareness, and the creator of the MPA process, which is a simple way to stop taking things personally. So if you were here on the first podcast, you'll know that um, while it's been on my mind for some time to do a podcast, uh, I kicked it off with my commitment to imperfection last week as I was on a course that was to inspire us to uh, go ahead and implement actually putting our podcast out there. So it comes out now every Tuesday. So this week I was in that position of going, oh my God, I've got to do another podcast. What do I do? And uh, <laughs> I'm thinking about content, what I want to kind of share with you here, what we want to do together. And certainly, if you've listened to episode one, then you know really what I'm all about, really making a difference. I call this be a brilliant human because I, I love the word brilliant and brilliance in this context because it covers a, lo a lot of different things. I mean, working in the, the realm of personal growth, evolution, change, transformation, all of those wonderful, delicious things. I mean, your brilliance can look at your, look at it in terms of like the light of your brilliance. It's like shining your light, which is a, a huge part of what I love to help people to do. But there's also that kind of invoking that inner genius, whether that's in a sort of cognitive or mental way, you know, getting really clever at stuff. And we're all clever at stuff. I know there's that idea, I'm not very clever. We're all clever in our own ways, bringing out our cleverness, our brilliance in terms of our of our mental things, our artistic brilliance. Our, there's so many forms of brilliance. So this show really is all about um, encouraging you to to increase, expand, and and really open into your brilliance. So wherever you are, whether you, you feel like oh I'm so not brilliant, um, hopefully what we do on this show will inspire you to. Uh, to come into that, to discover it perhaps. Uh, and if you already feel like there's there's pieces of yourself where you already express your brilliance, can we inspire you to, to go beyond where you already are uh, or even encroach that brilliance into those parts of you where it's not quite as brilliant yet? Certainly, I feel that, you know, my my job, if you like, what I love to do in the world if if you can listen to this podcast or whether you know you come and do the courses that I offer or or work with me one to one any of those kind of things that, that of my offerings if you like really what what it is is if I can help you to to really love and accept yourself in a very deep and true way so that you can you can kind of feel feel free to be you you know who you are your authentic self and I don't mean authentic as in like your spiritual self I mean, like, just just who are you? You know, who are you in the world? And if you can feel free to express that and be that, that's certainly one of my big goals. And and part of that is it's helping you to really value you, value yourself, and also value others in the world. Really, I want to help you to feel inspired and and alive. You know, at home, at home in yourself, at home in your well, your house, your home, <laughs> with your family or whoever you're with. Um, and also out in the world, comfortable and inspired and alive and full of vitality out there in the world. Because I think that's the place, that's the place we can do great things from. And the the big vision really here is, is a world of brilliant humans doing amazing things in the world, according to themselves. Well, that is not according to what some tick list is on the uh, you know, the world organization of what it means to be brilliant. <laughs> It's very much like, what is your own say-so on that and discovering what that is. So today, episode two, what are we going to talk about? Well, today I'm going to be, it's kind of a foundational episode, this one. This week and next week, I want to do a couple of sort of foundational um, ideas, really. And today I want to share with you, I'm calling the Brilliant Human Five Point Blueprint for Growth. Really, it's it's a five point map if you like to sort of to help you keep or to help keep you growing your brilliance really um so i mean i don't know about you but there's a i've talked to many many people and i've, I've worked in this field for so many years 
And a lot of us, and I'm sure that you're someone, if, if you found this and you're interested in this podcast, then you're probably what I would call a growth-seeking being. So in some way, you're kind of on what you might call the journey of personal growth or the awakening journey. And I don't know about you, but there are times uh, where you might feel like you just get lost in the madness of it, right? <laughs> You do these big prayers out into the world, you know, oh, transform me. And then your whole world goes to shit, you know, and you wonder, what the hell am I doing here? Why did I start this? Uh, and there's sort of there's chaos all around you. You can have a sense of failure. You just want to give up, um, you know, or you want to distract yourself. Like in The Matrix, where the, the guy, have you seen the film The Matrix, the first one? There's a point where, where the guy is eating steak and he knows it's not real, but he doesn't care. Just put me back in the illusion, he says. <laughs> So maybe you can relate to that. Um, you know, but the thing is that when, when you feel that sense of lostness, when you feel that sense of, you know, what am I doing it? And everything is kind of overwhelming, really. You come to that place of, of stalling, really, in, in the progress. Everything kind of grinds to a halt. And, and that can be, feel very demoralizing, you know, on a number of levels. You know, you can end up beating yourself up. You can... Uh, you know, just just this sense of sense of lostness, the sense of like you've ruined everything. You know, there's a whole host of of, of horrible echoey voices of doom that can come up just because the the process of of growth um, is something which is which can be challenging because it can create overwhelm, it can create chaos. It's part of the nature of change. And so, if, if you felt that way at all, let me tell you that. It, it's just, it's a common thing. You, you're not on your own in that. I know that my clients, a lot of my clients that come to me, um, have probably done a lot of work on themselves. So they're, they're kind of, they're cognitive to the, to the idea of it, but there's just, they're just going through something where, where they get that point of overwhelm. They feel a sense of loss, like, where am I? What am I doing? You know, what's going on? Um, and it happens to all of us. It doesn't matter how much work you've done. That's something I'll always come back to. Um, so, I mean, myself, let's, let's give myself as an example, right? Today, classic today, right? So I know I've got to put episode two out. Um, I've been away for the weekend. Uh, I come back and I, you know, I, I sit down and go, right, so I need to do a content strategy, right? So, <laughs> which is basically, you know, a, a bit of a plan about what I'm going to be talking about over the next, uh, you know, the next month or two with you guys here on the podcast, you know, and I've given, been given various instructions, but today I kind of got into my head. I got into overthinking, got to a place of overwhelm, literally. And and I actually came back to this map that I'm going to give you today. And I do with my clients. I come back to this this basic map because it it sort of grounds you in that that sense of of chunking it into simple, easy, um, an easy sense of where you are. And then I got inspired and <laughs> was like. I could share that today and at least get something done so I can get it out today to you um, and then come back to, to the rest of my content plan. And I do plan to sort of record ahead of ahead of time several episodes going forward. And by the way, if you want to have some input on that, do leave me um, a message. You can do that if you're listening to this or you can you found it through the Anchor page. You can go to anchor.fm slash Joel Young MPA and you can actually leave me a voice message. So I'm really open to some wonderful feedback or even constructive criticism. Um, and, and certainly if you want to say, oh, I'd love to hear you talk about this, I've got this going on, or if you want a question, to ask a question, uh, maybe some of the episodes coming up, we can do some, uh, some ask your, to uh, me answering your questions to the best of my ability, those kind of things. But certainly that's my plan is to, is to sort of batch record um, a set of them ahead of time. So hence my my sense of sort of getting a bit lost and overwhelmed because this is a growth process for me. It's like I've not done a podcast before. It's it's brand new. So that's what I'm going to be offering you today um, and sharing sort of this, this five-point blueprint for growth. And I will say that that, that for, certainly for me coming back to it, and I found this with my clients too, that um, when you when you come back, and I'm going to sort of encourage you to come back and listen to this episode, or take some notes, or or get a sense of it, sort of get it in your cells, so to speak. Coming back to it really takes you out of that kind of stalling. It takes you out of the self judgment and then back into movement, into progress. 
And also part of that is is a sense of it, it can give you that sort of self-acceptance because judgment is like putting a, a wedge under the door, you know. <laughs> it's like it just stops that whole progress. And certainly it's it's a relief to feel some movement and it sort of does tend to reconnect you to the inspiration that, you know, there'll be some inspiration that got you starting down the path of whatever the growth thing is that you're doing. Um, so, and of course, uh, it's, you know, it's a foundational thing that's so important. So that's certainly my, my prayer for you really today in this episode is that if there is something that where you feel you've stalled, that it re-inspires you, gets you back to that inspiration. And it gives you something that, as I say, you can come back to again and again. So before we dive into it, just to say to you that, you know, as you listen to me, as you go forward, if you feel like you want some support, you know, we all need a bit of help. I've got years and years of experience in helping people in their transformational journeys. So you can go ahead and have a look at my one-to-one -one offerings. If you go to my website, which is joelyoungmpa.com, and you'll find there's a, there's a tab there you can click for sessions. Or you can just go straight to joelyoungmpa.com dot com slash sessions it will get you there and have a look at how you can work with me one-on-one -on -one. it's one of the things i i absolutely adore is working with people you know to really get with them to, to meet them in the place that they arrive and help them to untangle all of those things and move forward to tremendous progress and huge breakthroughs which i've done over the years all right let's talk about this five point blueprint so well, let's let's start with sort of why it's important. <laughs> you know, why is it good to have a map? There's an NLP thing. NLP is neuro linguistic program. If you haven't heard of it, um, if you've heard of Darren Brown or Tony Robbins, they all kind of base their their incredible work on NLP. Um, but there's a saying that the map is not the territory. In other words, it's good to have a map, but it's not the whole picture. But maps are really important. So in terms of, of offering you this today, it's like it's good to have sort of the, a big picture or bird's eye view. Because as you go on that awakening journey and you hit all of these um, difficulties, it's good to step back and take a look and get a sense of, of where you are. So that's one of the main reasons I want to offer this. And, and as you've got like any map or you can think of it as a compass, I'm mixing my metaphors here. Uh, <laughs> but it gets it gives you a sense of something you can key into something you can come back to when you feel a bit lost or overwhelmed um that you can then sort of ground into and start and move forward step by step um and the other thing is is that with this map i mean i've i've framed it here and, and that's what we're about here is is about the the journey of of personal development personal growth evolution deepening in into your true self but this map actually is going to work on anything that you're experiencing where you're on a learning curve um so whether it's sort of so the, so the ephemeral stuff like the emotional work shifting your beliefs um, shifting relational dynamics, all these kind of things, it, it works, and that's where I'm really focusing on. But it'll work like practical things, like me to, to today. You're looking at marketing, looking at podcasting. This is a, a point where I'm learning about podcasting. I'm learning about how to how to do this thing, and uh, and so it's worked for me today at a very practical level. Uh, so whatever you're learning, whether it's something very practical or something very ephemeral, this is something that that can work for you. But it's good to have that sort of those those points of contact really and it's again because it's a map therefore <laughs> you know take it with in in a way which says like again it's not absolute it's like figure out how it works and fits into you it's not like you have to use all of the points all the time it, it's about giving you something that you can key into that will help you make progress so let's get into it what are these five five points to this blueprint so the first one is having a discovery mindset. Now, this one is, in a sense, it's an overarching one. It's an invitation to, to hold a perspective that is incredibly powerful. So what do I mean by a discovery mindset? Well, to be in a discovery mindset or discovery mode, in a sense, I'm going to say to you, it's like you've got to be in, in receiving mode. You've got to be open to receiving, you know, who am I becoming? <clears throat> where is this taking me 
not in a way which sort of tries to predefine outcomes. I mean, it's true that you have to hold those two things in balance because to a certain degree, you started something with an intention. But at the same time, a discovery mindset gives you an opportunity to sort of really explore, you know, the next natural step as you go along the way. So it requires you to have sort of a sense of curiosity, a, a sort of an openness to the to the universal prompts or the prompts that life offers back to you. And it also requires you to be humble. I talked about this in the in episode one about humility being a really sort of key factor in being a brilliant human. Um, and again, the distinction here, humble isn't being meek. I'm not talking about being meek. I'm being about, I'm talking about acknowledging your limitations at the time um, and acknowledging sort of where you are in, in the scheme of things. Um, the other thing about a discovery mindset is it's it's free of judgment. A discovery mindset is like, it, do this, it's go, hmm, I wonder <laughs> what's becoming now. It's very different to, you know, a judgmental point of view, which is like, I'm not doing good enough. I need to be better. You know, I need to become this. So <laughs> it's more that kind of, hmm, I wonder, is is kind of the key to a discovery mindset. You know, what's this about? What's becoming? Uh, where's this taking me? How interesting. Um, uh, you know, this this sort of approach is going to be much more helpful. So the first one is, is having a discovery mindset. Uh, the second one is so key in, in all that I do. It, I call it start where you are. In a sense, on an ongoing process, it's going to be be where you are, but start where you are. In any moment, come and start where you are. So what do I mean by that? It's really uh, an invitation to have an honest review. <laughs> Again, that humility comes in. Uh, it's like being being where you are rather than where you think you ought to be is so crucial. So oftentimes it's like we we say we want to go to this place, but I I I feel like I want to be more developed, more conscious than I am, and so you start from a place of not being connected to where you actually are. So any point in um in a in a process of growth, there's that part of us that sort of that wants to be further ahead. <laughs> I want to be there, <laughs> but I'm not. And that, that's a difficult thing, but it's so powerful to sort of, you think, oh, I've, I've got that bit covered, but have you? Have I, got, have I really learned that bit? You know, do I need to go back and acknowledge that actually I've got more work to do in this piece of the whole puzzle? Because by doing that, you're, you're, you're being real in, in relation to the growth path that you were on. And, and anywhere where you're not really starting where you are, you're not being where you are, you're kind of disconnected. It's like your cogs. You know, if you think about cogs, they have to sort of fit beautifully together. So one cog turns another cog and you get a leverage system. When you're, when you're in a place where you're not really being honest with yourself about where you are, it's like your cogs are disconnected and they're sort of, you're just literally spinning your wheels and you're not getting anywhere. I'm wondering, why am I not getting anywhere? It's because you're, you're thinking you're somewhere that you're not. You're not acknowledging um, where you truly are in the, the place of any progress. Now, this can sound a bit like, you know, or that might be a bit demotivational. But when you come again from that discovery mindset, you, you can come into a place of, oh, really interesting. I, I thought I had that down, but I realize there's bits I need to go back to and learn. Now you're coming in a connected place and you'll find that things move a lot quicker when you're in that very connected place of being where you really are. Okay, point three, consistent baby steps. <laughs> so I have an internal mantra that I want to share with you, which is stumble forward gracefully. <laughs> um, and that's part of having baby steps. It's also part of the next one, which we'll get to in a moment. Uh, but I remember there was a film called Contact back in the 80s, um, and contact was about meeting aliens for the first time, um, and had Jodie Foster in it. And uh, her character as a child, her mother died, and the father was sort of this mentor character to her. Um, and she was into astronomy, and and she wanted to find life out in the stars. So there was billions of stars, and her dad would always say to her, "Small moves, Ellie. Small moves." And it always stayed with me. And I think that's a great principle is, is to sort of just make small moves. 
I mean, our culture looks for those big wins. You know, we want the big successes, the, the, the gold medals and the big results. Give me some big numbers and tends to dismiss the sort of less sexy <laughs> little steps that happen along the way. I mean, those big shifts, they, they come along. You'll have moments where you have the, the, the peaks, you know. I mean, most growth processes aren't, you know, aren't gradual. You'll get, you'll get a, a climb and then a plateau and then a climb and then a plateau. And those, those, those climbs, you know, you go up further in a relatively short space of time. So those are the big wins and they will come along. You keep doing the small steps and, and you'll find that, you know, once in a while you'll have a, you'll have a big shift, a big win. And that's great, but keep your focus on those small steps because that's what what really sort of keeps you going. Um, I mean, if you imagine it's like if you think about um, scales, if you've got sort of on on a scale, you've got some sand on one side, and you start adding sand to another side. It takes a while before you get enough sand to hit that tipping point, right? So there's a lot of small moves take place before that tipping point actually happens. But you've got to keep adding it grain grain of sand by grain of sand, and, and eventually you'll find that tipping point comes along. So little and often is, um, is something which I strongly encourage. And consistent as well is an important part of this, to sort of just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. I mean, that's what I'm doing here with the podcast, right? My commitment is to imperfection and consistency so that I can regularly put out these podcasts once a week so you know it's there, you know I'm here, um, and all that, all that good stuff. And it's good practice for me to do that. So a little off. Other thing about calling it baby steps, um, you know, babies, they take little steps, they fall down, they get up, they fall down, they get up. It's it's part of the process of of, you know, do as much as you can. Don't set your goals. It's like, I great believe in having big goals, big dreams, but come back into the into the the moment, the close thing. What small step can I take? What thing can I do today, now, and tomorrow that will make a difference and move the needle in this? All right, let's go to number. Where are we up to? Number four. Express, test, refine is number four. So stumble forward gracefully more than ever comes into play here. Um, in a sense, you know, you have to go out and get feedback. You know, again, that means a commitment to that imperfection. But the the express test refine approach really is an invitation to you know whatever you're learning. It's like you've got to give it a go. It's like even if you're learning how to use an Excel spreadsheet, you've got to start tapping numbers in, try out the formulas, whatever it is you're doing, and see if it works. If it doesn't work, you come back you change it a bit, you do it again. So that kind of experimental process, and this is as true on things like learning spreadsheets as it is for, you know, working with changing your sense of identity, changing your mindset, changing your beliefs, shifting your emotions. It's like a, a good example is, is in shifting your communication skills. So one of the courses I, I offer, it's closed at the moment, we'll be relaunching it again soon, it's called Boundary Bootcamp. Uh, and it's about teaching people to to have sort of really good, healthy boundaries. But the, this whole express test refine is is key to that process. It's like you you start with you know I I, I recognise I've got this boundary. I'd like to hold this boundary, so I need to go and try it in the real world. Then you might meet the resistance, and in spite of the fact that I've given you all the tools to help you deal with the resistance, you know you find you crumble. But then you go back and say, okay, so how I approached it didn't fully work. I need to come back, reset, um, adjust how I'm approaching it, look at if there's any more emotional baggage to work through, the whole process of it, and then take it back out into the world. And you'll find that it might not work first time perfectly. It might do enough. And I've had, certainly have feedback from people who've had amazing results very, very quickly. But if you go out and you find that it, in quotes, fails, you know, then it's really a case if it hasn't really failed, it's just you've done, you've run a test and therefore you can come back and refine it and move forward. So having this express test refine approach um, is hugely powerful in terms of, of keeping you moving along on that growth path. So the final one, number five, is think about it as a what I call a progress spiral. Um, <laughs> there's so many times I hear people who do on the awakening journey and they say something like, I thought I dealt with this shit <laughs> because what they find is what seems that like the same stuff is coming up. You know, 
I thought I dealt with my anger issues. I thought I dealt with my mother. And um, then they go to their mother and, and the anger issues come up and it's like, oh, again, I failed. Um, and I thought I'd done my inner work and clearly I haven't because this crazy idea is out there that, you know, if you do the work, then that stuff won't ever come up again. And that isn't my experience. My experience is that we're in a progress spiral. So you kind of come in with into this lifetime, if you like, or your, your foundational personality is set with certain things that are in place. They're the nature of how you meet the world. So as you do your work, what's going to happen there is, is, is really that you, you are going to meet it in a new way. If you think about a video game, you know, one of these these video. I'm not really a gamer, but in a video game, you start off on the first level and you're basically meeting these monsters. You you express, test, refine, and you find you can you can beat those monsters really easily, and then you go up a level. And what happens? You meet basically the same monsters. They're slightly more powerful, you're slightly more powerful, and you learn how to do that, and then you go up a level, and then you meet, you know, the same basic monsters because you signed up for this particular game but they're bigger and stronger and you're bigger and stronger and you figure out how you can conquer those monsters and go up a level. And when it comes to our stuff in this spiral, you tend to meet the same stuff again and again, or it looks like the same stuff, but is it really? Actually, no, it's slightly, um, it's a slightly deeper version met with slightly more mastery. And so what I've discovered is, is as you go through life and you begin to, well, you know, I know for myself that I can spot my resistance signs. You know, if I, if I go into slight withdrawal or isolation, then I know that, that that's kind of a fear-based thing. It's one of my triggers. I now I don't go, oh, I failed. I haven't done my work. Oh, look, it's, it's a signal. I've come to my growth edge. And I'm meeting the same stuff again, but in a new way. So it's more of a spiral than this kind of black and white either or, you know, it's it's there, you fix it, it's done. All right, so there we go. So let's just do a quick recap of these five points. There's a discovery mindset and discovery mindset, start where you are and be where you are. Consistent baby set steps, express, test and refine and remember that it's a progress spiral that you're on. So I'd like to invite you to do these things. So pick an area in, in your life where you're growing and somewhere you feel stalled and overwhelmed. So first of all, get curious about it. Get that discovery mindset and then get really honest with yourself. You know, where are you in this in this process? What do you know? What have you learned? What do you not know? And be ruthlessly self-honest about that. And then ask yourself what small moves you can make to move you forward and commit to that movement. Then do it, express it, try it out, test it, and then come back and refine it and keep going around that cycle. And if you've hit that same old shit, just know that it's, uh, you know, maybe you've leveled up. Ask yourself, has have I leveled up? Is it really the same old shit? And if you do that in relation to whatever you've got going on, wherever you feel stalled or stuck, I hope that really helps you just to bust the stalledness and open you and, and re-inspires you into it. So there we go. That's my five-point step. That's my episode two. I'm watching my clock, which tells me I've got about three, well, two minutes left before this recording stops. That's the way the system works. So Again, I want to invite you to uh, go ahead and subscribe to this podcast, wherever you are, if you like it. Uh, come back and find me next week. If you're interested in working with me, go check out joelyoungmpa.com slash sessions. I would love to meet you, to work with you, to help you move forward in your progress and make a huge difference in your life. And a quick heads up, next week we're going to do another foundational episode. I'll be talking about the three types of interaction to master for authentic brilliance. So I look forward to seeing you then. Uh, again, give me a thumbs up somewhere. Uh, again, if you're on a, a system here where you can leave a review, do leave one and send me a message on anchor.fm slash MPA if you'd like to. And I will see you next week. Have a brilliant day. Mm -hmm.